Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, a persecution watchdog is delivering a pointed message to the Biden administration about the U.S. State Department's decision not to list Nigeria on its countries of particular concern list. We'll be talking in just a moment here with Jeff King, president of International Christian Concern. Let's hear what he has to say. So, Jeff, the U.S. has again decided not to add Nigeria to the State Department's uh, countries of particular concern recommendations. Can you, just before we get into the finer details of this, what is this designation? What does it actually mean? Yeah, I I think, Billy, probably the easiest way to say it is it's a list of the countries with the worst records on religious freedom around the world. And Nigeria, I mean, you can't turn around without a horrific report of persecution at this point coming out of Nigeria. In fact, over Christmas, Christmas Eve, a very horrific attack that claimed well over 100 lives there and impacted many others. Take us through what it is like right now to be a Christian inside of Nigeria. Well, and and maybe we'll pull back and let's look at the 20-year view. So starting 20 years ago about... Uh, um, basically, Christians started getting driven out of their villages at gunpoint, at machete point. Uh, armed attackers would come in. They're, they're from a tribe called the Fulanis. They'd come in. Uh, they would machete and shoot everybody, burn burn the place to the ground. And that's happened over and over and over for the last 20 years to the point that there's three and a half million Christian farmers that have been pushed off their, off their land, manding number. Uh, and no one knows the real number. I say up to 100,000 Christians murdered in that time. And in that whole time, you know, the, the Nigerian government says, gosh, this is a complicated problem. It, it's so hard to find these people. They're out in the bush. Nothing ever happens. So day to day, you're wondering uh, if you're a Christian in Nigeria and you're out in the bush, you're wondering if your village is next and whether you're going to live through the night. I mean, and this is especially horrific for a lot of reasons, but you look at the situation here, it's not as though there are no Christians in Nigeria, right? You just mentioned over 3 million when it comes to land and 100,000. This is a country where around half of the country essentially is Christian. And so some might say, well, wait a minute, how in the world can you have a situation where there are that many believers and yet you're still having this level of persecution? Yeah, a very complex question, or the answer is very complex. And and Nigeria, let's say, you know, the top half of the country is Muslim, the bottom half is Christian. And the battleground has all been the the middle ground, Billy, as you know. It, what started in the north, they drew, they drove the Christians out of the north, and that was like Boko Haram, and they pushed them down. And now they're taking the Christians out of the middle belt. Uh, and so the the main area of Christians in Nigeria, the, the south, has not been affected to a great degree. It's starting to go down in the south, but it's mostly been the middle. So as Christians get more and more attacked in the south, we'll probably see more of an uprising. Uh, but at the same time, when, when it, it's a powder keg. When you've got three and a half million people, and, and think how many men, unemployed men, that were driven unjustly off their land. So this is a powder keg. Uh, waiting to happen. So just because nothing has happened, it doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. But the broad thing is, again, Muslim North, Christian South, the Christian South is still not being largely affected. And and you have a situation here coming coming back to America, right, where you have the countries of particular concern, you have this list, you have the most powerful country in the world being able, I would imagine, to put some form of pressure on the Nigerian government. Because the, the other question here that people will have is, well, why aren't government officials, why aren't authorities, police doing anything to stop this? And why is this continuing to happen? What what is your message right now? If you had the Biden administration in front of you, the State Department, um, what would you say to them? 
I would say 100,000 deaths, three and a half million Christian farmers driven off their lands. This is a slow motion uh, genocide. It's a slow mo motion jihad. What does it take for the United States to use uh, what they're best at? Just use the, and the administration, use the bully pulpit to speak up and to stand for those who are oppressed, to stand for the defenseless. That's all we have to do. And, and call a spade a spade and, and talk about what's going on in Nigeria and the failure of successive Nigerian governments to deal with this. And, and the hidden story in all this, Billy, I'm kind of I'm going off the talking point or, or what you asked, but it's really because Muslims are in control of the army, uh, the intel agencies, and the police. And that's why nothing ever happens. It's an inside job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm glad you went off off the script there, because that is part of what I was saying. You know, you have two issues here. You have their government not doing anything. And now you have the U.S. government, the most powerful government in the world, not at least not publicly taking action by putting Nigeria on this list. And so the question that emerges, what's going on behind the scenes? Is there any pressure actually happening that we know of? And a lot of this is speculative. But I do need to mention the Trump administration did place Nigeria on this list and gave it this designation um, for one year, and I believe, and then it was it was taken off by the Biden administration. What do you make of the reasons that you think are driving the U.S. position on this at this point? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I mean, I mean on the one hand, Billy, you've got the long term problem of, of what the State Department does. The State Department gets the law right. Uh, and so, you know, to the point that Congress created legislation, they created a gadfly to push the State Department on this type of issue. And that's what that was the creation of USERF, if people know what that is. But they, they, the Congress said, look, the State Department is ineffective on this issue. And we need to be, we need to have a watchdog and a gadfly to push them. So look, they exist to get along. Uh, another, another level of answer is oil. Nigeria has a lot of oil. So uh, they get a different consideration than a lot of countries. But apart from all that, like I said, this is a powder keg. It is a disaster waiting to happen. If it ever goes to civil war, which sooner or later it will, you can only kill so many people and steal their land without them rising up. And if it ever goes to civil war, you have a, a refugee problem that dwarfs everything else we've seen. Uh, you know, Nigeria is the largest, most populous country in Africa. So it, it behooves the U.S. government to get involved and to deal with this problem before it gets worse. Yeah, and your organization, International Christian Concern, you're on the front lines of alerting people to what is going on, of helping when it comes to persecution. This is a problem. You know, persecution is a word that gets thrown around a lot, but the reality yeah. is it's getting worse around the world. And you have a nation here, Nigeria, where it seems like it's among the worst of any nation um, in the world. What can people be doing to come alongside your organization, whether it's prayer, whether it's helping in other ways, to help alleviate this issue and bring attention to it? Yeah, and and so first, I would just lift up what you just said. Look, this is this in North Korea. There are no places that are worse, and this is maybe even worse than North Korea. And that's why I'm always pointing to Nigeria because one, people don't talk about it; it's hidden. Uh, but the massive number of deaths uh, and destruction of personal property, it's unbelievable. So, and it's beyond, honestly, my organization. I so appreciate the question, but it's really just people need to become involved. They first need to become aware. So whether that's, whether that's, be, uh, whether they go to persecution.org, my organization, or one of the others, one of the other big groups that deals in persecution, get involved, just start understanding what's going on and hearing about the tax. And then you're sensitive. And then we call our legislative members and we, and we push them uh, and even call the State Department. We run letters. It's it's the same old situation. We can't just stop at prayer. The Lord says for us to remember the oppressed, to stand up, especially for the family of God, our brothers and sisters who are being decimated. So first become aware and then take action. Otherwise, our lives are too busy. Life is crazy. We forget about this and we don't see what's going on. So get informed. Well, I appreciate that. Get informed. That is a great place for us to close here. I appreciate you taking the time today and coming on. Wonderful. I so appreciate your work. Thank you. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.